and it's gonna lick your <laughs> voila oh god that is a lot of oil all right and here is the oil pump assembly now we need to take this apart and put in obviously the new oil pump gear so we're gonna get to a nice clean place where we can show you things with lots of light and we're gonna disassemble this and show you how to put it together okay all right so once all of these bolts are out, and what size is this? IP27. An IP27. So IP27s to remove those uh, eight screws really is what they are. And now you can, wait for it, there's a lot of stiction in that oil. Boop. Open up the backing plate and expose the oil pump gears. Now, let me ask you something. We're dropping oil pump gears in here. But I've heard the internet talk about sometimes deburring things in there. Is there sometimes burrs that you find inside of the oil pump yeah, housing? Yeah, you go through and just kind of look and see, like, see if there's anything. Run your fingers around it. If there's anything that it catches, then yeah, deburr it. But I, out of every ten of these I do, there's like one that needs cleaned up. So okay. it's worth looking at. If we find a burr, we'll bring you back and show you what it looks like and how to clean it up. There you go. Uh, anyways, we're gonna go grab our fancy gears. We're gonna inspect this really well and then show you how to put it back together. So like really in this situation, we're looking for any imperfections in the housing where one of these rotors could touch. So like here it touches, here it touches, here it touches, here it touches. You want to make sure all that's good before you put brand new gears in there. And uh, as far as like my experience with the S650s, these housings are machined pretty well. They usually do a pretty good job. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to grab the new gears and we're going to show you putting them in there. It's going to take just a second. Um, yeah, so I was looking at something interesting, and I said, Jordan, come look at this. It kind of looks like there's cavitation damage on the tip of the rotor. Um, and these that's what these actually are. They're not gears. They're rotors. Um, and if you look, you see that pitting and scratching it looks like it has? That's not actually scratching. There's no damage on the outer rotor in that same position where they touch each other. It will still for just a second. You see how nice and clean that surface is in there? There's none of that in there. What you're seeing is actually ca damage from cavitation. What happens during a cavitation is you generate a ton of pressure in a micro area and any air or moisture in the oil kind of collapses in on itself and explodes outwards. And that's that's what creates uh, damage here. It's a, That creates cavitation. Whenever it has that, ex that outward explosion under negative pressure, it can actually lift metal away from a surface. And that's what you're seeing there. That is damage from cav. Did I explain cavitation well? Sure. Okay. I didn't know if he was making a face at me. This, that is cavitation damage, right? Now this can also be induced if the oil foams, right? So there's multiple ways to get cavitation. So you could overspeed and create the situation I just told you there, where you have a negative pressure and it creates a bubble that burst, or you could foam the oil catch air, that sort of thing. And that also will cause cavitation, but kind of in the opposite direction because it'll trap the air. But this, this is definitely cavitation damage. That is super interesting. Um, that cavitation is like detonating an engine, right? It's kind of the same thing. You're having an explosion in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that will eventually cause a failure of this rotor. And these are actually, the technical term for these are gyro rotors. And I want to take a second to show you how these work. So the way that this pumps oil, you look at it and you're like, well, how in the world does this pump oil? Because it's just a pair of gears. The oil enters from the pickup tube here and it enters this cavity, right? So the oil is chilling here in this cavity and needs to be lifted across to the exit, which is on this side. What happens, and let me put the gyro rotors back in. That is a very snug fit. Come on, that's tight. Get in there. Come on, get in the hole. There it is. The gyro rotor, this guy in the middle right here, makes a rotation and picks the oil up from here under suction as it passes by. And then the whole assembly rotates and the little bit of oil it picked up gets redeposited on the front end. So if I take this, as the crank is rotating, this is open. This, this will profuse and suck in oil. And then it will rotate the, like this 
down and around and it's gonna push that oil, well, if I'd spin it the right way, it's gonna push the oil through this cavity down off to this side, pressurized to feed the engine. That's how this works, except it's spinning really, really, really fast whenever it does it. And you can imagine if, um, if a cavitation event was gonna occur, while let's say, imagine, imagine a detonation event in an engine when it's timed incorrectly, when the fuel, fuel burst happens at the wrong time, if when it performs that pinch, you see that pinch right there, that's almost like a compression stroke it's creating. So what'll happen whenever it's in this position right here, on the back edge of the rotor as it moves away, a strong vacuum is created here and you can actually cause the moisture in the oil to, to, to boil out and burst uh, like things do under vacuum. And then also if the oil is foaming, you can also trap air and then on the compression side of the stroke here, consider this as a stroke, right? On the compression side of the stroke, if the oil is foaming, you've now trapped air in here with that oil as well, which can also have kind of a cavitation effect and burst. And that's how you end up with, if I can get it out of the hole, that is very slippery. The cute bubbly little pitted marks on the end of that rotor. That's super cool. I didn't expect to see this. And you said that this is pretty common whenever you take them apart? Interesting, okay. How, why do you think it does that, even for stock? Is this just because the car is tuned and revving a little harder? I think, yeah, I think, I think you're operating outside of a engineered RPM range probably. Gotcha. Uh, but I, I mean, it would take a long time to cause any serious damage, but you get over time, like if you could, if you had a sophisticated, sophisticated enough way to measure your oil pressure, you could probably measure a small drop as things wear out, but it would take a long time for that. To, to cause a problem, but the biggest problem with these is typically they'll crack here. Right. And when it then, goes into the compression stroke as it's sucking in the oil from this side, it'll actually break under that compression stroke. And then you'll lose oil pressure and then you're doing so the whole engine. Can we show them the new oil pump gears and how oh, these are top secret. I'm just kidding. <laughs> how boundary has fixed the cavitation issue that these have. Y'all notice something different about these? What do y'all see? They're two stages. Explain why two stages helps prevent cavitation. Uh, well, it's you're not trying to do all of your um, pressurizing of the oil in one, essentially one stroke. You're doing it in two separate places. So you're not putting all of that onus on just one side of the rotor. You're doing it in stages. So it's, it's, it's less. So this guy is doing every stroke of oil is just this surface. This entire surface is taking in a stroke of oil. So and this, this guy, there are two independent strokes occurring, one feeding oil. One stroke of oil is feeding oil into the next stroke of oil as it forces it over to the high pressure side. So it divides the work into two separate strokes, therefore halving the amount of stress that's put on the tip of the gel rotor as it turns. Right? Yep. Sound good? Okay. So now we're going to stick these in the hole. Uh, do we need to do more cleaning? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're gonna do some more cleaning and we're gonna show you getting them stuck in a hole. I have here what Jordan has referred to as Smurf jizz and then ran away rather than saying it himself. Um, these, this needs to go literally everywhere. So everywhere the oil pump gears touch the surface of the pump housing, there needs to be Smurf jizz everywhere. Uh, we're gonna take more and I'm gonna rub it in here. I'm gonna take more and rub it in here. And the point of this is to help the oil pump gears out, much like assembly lube, it's to help the oil pump gears out when the car starts for the first time. It helps the oil pump gears prime for the first time, and it helps keep there from being any excessive wear on the oil pump gears while the engine pulls its prime. So we're literally, I'm gonna smurf that up, I'm gonna smurf this up, I'm going to take my, these are boundary, by the way, these are boundary dual stage oil pump gears. These are hot off the press. They've got their fancy treatment coating on it, but I'm also going to rub the Smurf jizz outside, inside, inside, outside, all over it. We're going to bring you back once this all looks blue. Um, clearly, you jerked off a Smurf. Jordan's comment about what this ends up looking like is correct. I look like, um, I don't know how you know that that's correct. That's what, by what metric? Are you measuring that? <laughs> Just, I would assume it, that the emissions out of a 
a uh, a Smurf. This is this is what they look like. So I've got the outer ring sat in this housing already. And Jordan made a really good point. On this guy, it says this side up. And yes, even the stock gears are directional. Uh, they've got a mark on them. It matters. And in this case, this side up means if it's sitting on the bench and looking at you, that's the side that's up. But Jordan made a good point. If you've got a laser etching machine boundary, uh, why wouldn't we just put backing plate side or front of engine or something like that so that, because it is kind of like, well, hold on. You could, if you want to be a bit of a tool, and I'm being a bit of a tool right now, Boundary, so have peace with this. What side is up? I mean, has the car flipped upside down? Is the engine out of it on a job? I mean, just, you know, <laughs> are we putting the oil pump gears in with it upside down? Anyways, I've clearly covered everything in Blue Jizz. I am going to sat the oil pump gear into the house. And uh, what do we need to do now, Jordan? Other than chase Didn't you around the shop with blue fingers. I would put your blue fingers under the sink. <laughs> That's what I would do next. <laughs> Clean yourself up and come back and we'll put some bolts in. We'll put the cover on and put some bolts in. Yeah, we're, we're going to show you. Is there a, probably a torque seek? Uh, is there a torque pattern for this? Or you just kind of send it. There is a torque pattern. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to show you a torque pattern. We're going to put lots of red jizz on the That's not bolts. red. No. Is it, oh, is it blue? Yeah. It just looks red. It's a trick. Oh, well, uh, more blue jizz, a different type, is going to go onto the bolts, and uh, we'll show you how to do that. Be right back. Let me try to look less like I had fun with the sperm. So is any concern for grease being on any part of certain mating surfaces that might make this a problem? Well, uh, well as with any mating surface, you don't want a bunch. So it, maybe... It, you, try not to, you try not to get stuff on the mating surface. Maybe that's a little too much right yeah, there. Because like, right there's... If y'all can see here, there are surfaces that that backing plate needs. Like, see, there's a, a little extra right there. You could throw the torque specs off is what I'm getting at. That's, that's why I'm asking Jordan to try to make sure that we don't have too much grease in the wrong place. And it actually throws off the torquing as we, we tighten this down. And I actually just found that it don't quite have enough jizz on that little guy right there. So he's going he's gonna to get a little bit more jizz. Okay, now, this guy goes like this it appears and gets sat down like that uh jordan has already kindly put some blue loctite on here a dab on the end of it is all it takes and i am going to start some of these machine screws into the holes and the the next is obvious let me get all of these in and then we're going to bring you back and show you the torque sequence that we're going to use to make sure that this gets tightened down just right. Be right back. All right, so we have very gently brought the screws down using the gun, no impacting here. Inside working out in a star pattern. So inside, opposite, working out until we've gotten all of them gently snug by hand at first and then ran them down. Now we're ready to actually start the torquing procedure. What are we torquing to? 89 inch pounds. 89 inch pounds. So we're gonna torque them to 89 inch pounds in the same pattern, inside working out. This one's the closest. Inside, opposite, 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 opposite. You get the point. Um, and then we'll probably run over it a second time just to make sure that everything's settled. And then we're ready to go. Love having the rain. I'll start to feel like maybe I've done that. I'm already starting to feel like I missed it. <laughs> and then that's the first set of torquing. Uh, we're going to go back over it one more time, just to make sure sometimes when you torque things, it wiggles around and resettles one more time and we're done. You know, the beauty of being in a shop where they fix broken cars and do a bunch of oil pump gears is that uh, we get to have examples of these things. We showed you the crank sprocket, right? But I wanted to show you an actual broken oil pump gear. Now, whenever Jordan did this one, the outer ring was still together, but it had a crack here and a crack here. And like, basically this car was one pull away from becoming a, a grenade. And when he pulled it out and found the damage, he took the outer ring and he just carefully dropped it from the ground from waist height and it exploded, one drop. Um, this, is, this is what you're trying to prevent. 
I was curious. Let's look and see. See, look, the this one's got a bunch of cavitation damage on the the tips of the gyro rotor too. You can see it there. But uh, yeah, this this is what you don't want uh, the ticking time bomb. Clearly, there is some alignment that has to happen here for it to mesh with the crankshaft well. So let me try to key this. And wouldn't I will laugh if this it just oil slides, right just on. slides right on? I will too, because then we can go to lunch. <laughs> Y'all ready? Y'all ready here? Let's try it. It sure looks like it's in the right place. Come on, baby. Don't make a fool out of me. Oh, hey. ah! <laughs> it looked like it was in the right place. That was very satisfying. I almost want to pull it off and do it again. It's like putting in a torque converter. Yeah. When you get the thump. last click, you know what I mean? <laughs> yep. You're fighting with it and it doesn't want to go. And all of a sudden it just goes shunk oh, all yeah. the way to the bottom. That's satisfying. I always bring it all the way to the bottom. Oh man, that's a real nice fox body over here. What you doing? What you doing, Ron? What am I doing? I'm taking your expensive ass oil out of your car. Oh, why are you recording this right now? <laughs>